and I think we are live now. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to this live stream. Uh, you're joining myself and John Darkley here. We're going to have a little bit of a chat about uh, recent events that have been going on uh, in the world at large, uh, in the media. This thing with uh, James Gunn that's happened, uh, with his tweets and the outrage machine that's developed from that, uh, which basically he kind of caused, in a sense, by... Um, well, we'll get into it, all this nonsense with his tweets and very, uh, you know, it's a strange thing because people try and excuse certain behaviours by saying it's only a joke. And in his case, that's what he, he seems to have been trying to do. And it wasn't just one offbeat comment or something or one offbeat so-called joke. It seems to have been a case of a lot of comments being made. And um, it's, it's got a lot of people pretty angry, uh, understandably. Uh, but it's also uh, a case of the chickens coming home to roost, as it were, in some regards, because you see the left, which James Gunn would probably count himself as a part of, has been so heavily pushing this idea of censoring people and firing people and, you know, shutting people up and shutting them down and so on, uh, that now they've got one of their own in the firing line and they're they're anti-censorship all of a sudden, which is really interesting. You know, that's what was that all about? Um, so there's a little bit of an element of hypocrisy, to say the least, uh, on that front. But this outrage machine that has developed, that's something else that we're going to be speaking about. Why is it there? How How is it that it's come to be? And um, what is it about the current age that leads people to constantly be outraged about something. And a related topic with regard to this would be uh, social media addiction, because we're living in an age where social media is front and center with everything. Uh, and everyone seems to be looking for reasons, right or wrong. Sometimes it's justified reasons, but uh, we, ha we have this culture now where it's, it's almost incumbent on people to be outraged. Um, so that's something else we'll be touching on uh, also. But um, I'd just like to introduce my guest, John, and welcome him back. He's been on before several times. Uh, how are you doing today, John? Well, thanks for uh, having me here. I'm doing great. It's a bit hot in here, but I guess I will uh, make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the heat wave has been killing everybody it's, in Europe. It's insane. So. It's like it's yeah. not, not, not even Holland anymore, it seems. <laughs> No, it's like being in the middle of a of a desert or something, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're 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 learning to live with it. Uh, yep. uh, thanks to the uh, brilliant inventions of the West, of course, um, we have air conditioning, mm -hmm. and and that is not something to be scoffed at. Uh, right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's great things. Great things. Well, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I'm, uh, how, how have you been keeping otherwise uh, aside from the heat wave? Aside from the heat wave, I'm doing okay, I guess. <laughs> Um, just um, you know, making you know, just just creating new new music, new songs, albums, and uh, learning a lot about you know life and philosophy as as usual. And uh, the thing is, um, uh, it is hard for someone like me, who is an independent artist, to uh, kind of you know make it, if you will. But you have to kind of know what you mean by making it. So it, it, it's a different thing for, 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 for different people, I guess. But otherwise, um, yeah, well, other than that, it's just uh, a continual process, you know, of uh, learning and expressing. And, uh, and it's also good to, uh, to, to see that you're back on, uh, on track, you know, with YouTube and also. Yeah, yeah, it was a little bit of a few rough months there, uh, dealing with a family matter. John and I were talking about it off the air. Um, things did get really, really bad at a certain point in time. And um, so my attention got diverted to trying to deal with things in my immediate vicinity. And I think there's a lesson to be learned in that. I've certainly learned that lesson that you have to deal with first things first before you go off and try and save the world or whatever it is uh, that one might be motivated by. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, the, the whole of life is a learning experience, and I'm still learning along with everyone else, too. Uh, so, yeah, you do the best you can, and I'm glad to be able to be back and, uh, again, getting back to what I was doing, taking it up a notch in a sense as well. 
Uh, because one of the things I noticed, and I don't know if you noticed this yourself, John, but one of the things I noticed is that the ultimate difficulty that is arising in the world is the lack of knowledge and understanding. People don't understand why we're at the stage that we're at. So helping them to grasp that, that is uh, something that I'm hoping to do. And I've already started down this road. For those of you that have been with the channel uh, for a while, you'll notice this. Why is it that the uh, dialogue between the political left and right is broken down entirely? Why is it that polit politics in general has become the sole focus of so many people, right? It's, it's almost as if it's, it's um, replaced the bread and circuses of old. But there's a reason behind that, though, philosophically, why that's been the case. Uh, why is it not the case that we're following soccer or, you know, American football or baseball, uh, and instead uh, politics is the new um, arena in which people battle it out in gladiatorial fashion? Um, th th again, there's, there's reasons behind this that I've talked about in uh, several of my previous videos now, so... Uh, that, I think, is more necessary in order to establish a, a dialogue again, because what I've been seeing recently, and we're veering off the kind of the, the subjects we're going to get into, but what I've been seeing recently is this complete breakdown in society. And that's an ex extraordinarily dangerous thing, because if people stop speaking with each other, if the dialogue stops, then have no doubt there's only one thing that emerges, and that is a path of complete violence. Right. So in order to prevent that, that's why we have to start understanding each other as human beings. We've lost that. OK, we've started to see and this. This ties into actually some of what we're going to be speaking about. We've started to see people not as people anymore, but as digital projections. OK, and this is part of the problem with the social media phenomenon. We've digitized people not only in the uh, literal sense of that word in terms of technology, but we're also creating these uh, images of what we think they are, who we think they are, and we're, we're making them uh, one dimensional, right? So for example, this is just an example. You have people who are branding everybody else as Nazis based on maybe something that was said here or there, or if somebody misspeaks, or whatever else. You've got people branding people as Marxists without understanding maybe that guy over there has a point about something. Maybe he's trying to say something, he's not expressing it very well, or whatever else in terms of problems with the system, right? But uh, this is all happening. And a lot of it stems from, uh, as, as I tried to explain um, in the last video I put up, a lot of it actually stems from this uh, total rejection of rationalism, the total rejection of rationalism, the rejection of faith and belief, the rejection of metaphysics, the rejection of ethics, it's all gone out the window, right? So-called philosophers, here's another point I'd like to make very quickly as well, and then I'm gonna read some of what's going on in the chat and then we'll talk about, about James Gunn again as well. But uh, some of the stuff that I've been seeing from so-called philosophers like Stephen Molyneux, and I'm not slating him, he's done a lot of good work out there. But a lot of this is starting to trouble me now in terms of the direction this is taking. If a person wants to call themselves a philosopher, they should address, address the proper issues within philosophy itself and how that actually relates to society at large. Instead, what's happening is there's just politicization, politicization, and nobody's getting anywhere. Right, all it's doing is polarizing people, and nobody's getting any handle on why the problems that are here now exist. And until we do that as people, we're not going anywhere anywhere fast. Okay, we're just going to stay, stay stuck, and we're going to keep wanting to beat each other over the head with clubs until folks start speaking again, which is what they should have done in the first place. You know, so. This is this is my main worry here, um, and a lot of folks also don't understand uh, psychological manipulation that happens in any extreme arena. Uh, that's that's something else that troubles me very deeply as well. Uh, if you get too much of this, then it's ultimately going to lead to uh, not only uh, acts of violence, but but also um, uh, m extreme misunderstandings, and that's what we're seeing extreme misunderstandings. There are valid, legitimate concerns people have 
about a million and one things, be it, say, for example, uncontrolled immigration. That is a valid concern. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise, right? Um, but then there's there's the there's that phenomenon where people take that and turn it into a political football in order to score points or in some cases in order to gain views or to gain likes and all this business this reinforcement of this uh social medium uh this this addiction to that social medium because they are interested in creating their own brand okay it's a business project for them that's the thing and people need to be wary of that uh, do you have any thoughts on that, John? Yeah, I'm uh, ha happy you brought that up because um, I, I've 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 seen this trend going on now for at least one year, but possibly since Trump, you know. Um, and we we you, you and I talked about uh, in, in my uh, show about ideology and philosophy, and this is exactly what's going on. It's like this is all ideology now. It's all one. Uh, way of thinking or the other way of thinking and it's just you you kind of you kind of attach your yourself to that and you find other friends or uh, Online friends, you know to kind of join you and then we, it's kind of a battle again It's like well, you're on the left. So you're a communist. Well, I'm on the right. So I'm a fascist and all it's it's it is it is not helping and uh, The point that you made about Stefan Molyneux. I, I mean that is I've seen him change over the years dramatically I mean yeah, he he does make good points, of course, but um, still, I mean, you can see that that it is a brand, you know, like like m many others have have gone now. I mean, um, the obvious ones. I don't know if I can if I can name them, but a certain. I'm sorry, you 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 are muted there. Yeah, no, uh, I muted myself there. <laughs> Okay. Um, no, I was going to say go for it by all means because uh, if we get shut down, we get shut down for speaking the truth, you know, the, oh, the okay. pure unadulterated truth as, insofar as what we know it to be. Yeah. Um, so go ahead. Well, I, I don't have to talk a lot about it, but it's like I think the point is that um, people find a certain niche, you know, to kind of attach them themselves to. And uh, it, it's going to be a brand. It's going to be... Like like you said, for the likes and for the shares and for the for the, the the money in some cases, you know, just being edgy, you know, being controversial, and especially social media is 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 perfect because you can show off how how daring you are, how how controversial you are, um, uh, you know, and as you as you said about censorship, uh, which mainly comes from. Uh, leftist ideology who is going to censor other things than you know leftist it's 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 like well they can censor you if they don't agree with you but they will kind of um allow people talking about pedophilia and uh, you know all the other stuff that that is that is well because we have to be tolerant of that so why, why don't you censor that then because <laughs> that, that that to me is controversial right Absolutely. And this brings us very nicely on to the topic again of James Gunn, right? We've got this guy who's making pedophile jokes. I don't find that funny. Um, there might be some twisted people out there that do. There's all kinds of senses of humor out there. Uh, but like I said, it wasn't just the one instance. This was a, a continuous thing, which he did over uh, a set period of time. Um, now, it could be that he's changed in his being that's entirely possible it could be that he's realized he's not edgy with that sort of comedy or whatever uh, but what's what's disconcerting about that is that this guy actually um had a lot of links inside hollywood to some people who were prosecuted for child abuse and uh, for a, a similar kind of thing so um i don't know is it a case of where there's smoke there's fire i i can't say in this instance but i will tell you one thing um it is hypocritical if they're shutting people down for saying the N word. Let's say if if the and, and we'll we'll call them the left because that's kind of what they're calling themselves. In a sense, they've created this um, paradigm. Uh, these controllers they've created this paradigm of left and right. Okay, but uh, people willingly kind of associate themselves as being leftists. They become collectivists. So by their own um, admission, they are leftists. And they 
have constantly demanded that the N-word be censored, not only in um, uh, uh, political dialogue, right, which in itself is wholly wrong because of the concept of free speech and the fact that freedom itself is entirely centered on that, but also in the literary arena. So say, for example, you've got a novel like Huckleberry Finn. Now, Huck Finn, the novel, is designed to uh, express the difficulties and the problems that come with racism. So the N-word in that novel, and I can't even say it, this is the bizarre thing. If I say it, then I'll get, you know, uh, booted off of YouTube quite likely or thrown in jail or uh, at the very least arrested and cautioned. Uh, this is the kind of um, environment we're in now. But that, that piece of literature was seeking to raise awareness at that time, historically, about some great injustices which were happening. Now, the moment you start doing that, and, and recently there was this thing uh, last year about trying to censor To Kill a Mockingbird, which again was trying to highlight the uh, very real problems when it comes to race and segregation and all this sort of business and, you know, very, very serious topics. But the left is kind of trying to shut all that down Okay, in a weird sort of way, they claim to be for all these ideals, and yet when it comes to the crunch, they're they've gone you know way off the um, way off the map. <laughs> you know, they've they've completely lost the plot, and so it's become about political correctness, uh, which is a very real phenomenon. And why does it exist? It exists because uh, it's an attempt, really, to erase history. It's an attempt to uh, bring about or, or bring into a very real fashion this idea of a blank slate, okay, this blank slate theory garbage. So let's start off with a blank slate, but they don't even follow that logic through because if they did, then they would acknowledge, like this is Rousseau's type of thinking, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into it too much here, but Rousseau's thinking was that everyone is born as a blank slate and therefore uh, our environment entirely shapes everything that we are and who we are and so on. Um, there's a lot of truth in saying that socialization has a lot to do with who we turn out to be. But there is a problem when you say that's the only thing, right? And, and, and yet even there, uh, many of these social justice types, social justice warrior types, um, they don't allow who they consider to be the enemy to have that same distinction of being blank slates, right? It's like, we'll just do away with that entirely. So it's a double standard. You've got this hypocritical double standard constantly being pushed, and that is the problem. The rules of the game are not fair. And when the rules of the game in these kind of instances are not fair, you're using one set of criteria to declare yourselves as virtuous, but another group you are branding as being unvirtuous or, or um, you know, morally repugnant or whatever. And so therefore they're not deserving of the same human rights and whatever else. There's a very serious problem there, you know, because who are you to be the arbiter of all of that? But these people are being the arbiters of all of that, and they don't realize that they're making subjective judgment calls. Yeah. So, you know, what, what are you going to do? But yeah, this this James Gunn guy, you know, this is the problem with it. It is a double standard. It is a hypocrisy. They, they shut down Roseanne, for example, right? And I was just kind of following this generally at the time. Didn't really look too much into it. But uh, they, they, they canceled her show. They got her fired for saying something about Valerie Jarrett, okay, which... Uh, in a certain light, in a certain context, yes, it, it could be taken. I'm not going to disagree with that. It could be taken as being racially, um, you know, uh, it, yeah, it would be basically, um, you could see it as being racial, right? You could see it as being racist. But that's not the only interpretation of it. There are a million and one different explanations as to why uh, Roseanne might have tweeted what she did about that. That's not to say that the tweet itself isn't necessarily morally wrong or right or whatever. I'm not making a judgment on that. What I'm pointing out is that the entirety of the left descended in order to make that happen. Yet when this guy, James Gunn, is talking about pedophilia and making it excusable through humor, making it, you know, trying to normalize it, that's somehow okay 
And you have half of Hollywood pretty much, including people like Selma Blair and all this business behind it. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. And yet, ironically, what's happened is the very same outrage machine, this is what I was saying earlier, the very same outrage machine has now um, come back and bit them on the ass because Disney's fired them because they considered uh, what he said inappropriate because they have a brand which is uh, Disney, the, 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 the children's cartoon company and all this sort of business, right? Uh, so that's the parent company, Guardians of the Galaxy was produced uh, by, um, uh, I think it was Marvel, but under Disney's banner or something weird like that. I'm not 100% sure about that, but they didn't want him associated with their brand, okay? Which is understandable. Um, but the left again, and, and we're talking about this as if it's one kind of massive um, blob of a group, but it's not. I mean, you've got individuals there, if only they recognize their individuality, but uh, that particular conclave, let's say, the hardcore, diehard Marxist left, well, they're not even Marxist, really, because even they have a moral yardstick, but, um, you know, whatever these people are, they, they um, are quite happy to excuse uh, that sort of thing whilst condemning everybody else. Well, it goes back to that biblical saying here then, doesn't it? Uh, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. You know, but people don't want to do that. And wasn't the uh, the creator of uh, Rick and Morty also under fire? Because he, uh, what, 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 what was it that he did? He kind of uh, mimicked having sex with a with a doll or with a this baby doll. You know, uh, I, I've, I've, I still have to look it all up. But um, yeah, it's like Hollywood is obviously filled with weird people with weird degenerate thoughts you know and uh but by firing james gunn or ex or at least have him, him having him exposed um you wouldn't expect it at first because he is part of the the, the group the group you know so the fact that they that he was on a fire for for that I think as mostly it's to to do with the fact that he is attached to a certain brand, like like you said, like you know all the movies that that, that he's attached to. So it's now it's just a kind of a conflict of interest, I guess, <laughs> instead of actual caring about you know about or ex at least about what he actually said. You know, it's it. I think it's more like a business strategy to to kind of fire him. I guess <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a PR disaster, basically, for Disney. You know, and they had to do something. They had to be seen as yeah. doing something. Yeah. Uh, but it's a no-win situation as far as both that corporation is concerned, and also the people that um, are supporting uh, James Gunn through this. You know, um, but that brings us very nicely on to the other thing, which is this outrage machine. As we said, the left kind of created it, and because they've been filling people's heads with this nonsense that they have to get outraged about everything all the time okay and this has been non-stop since certainly since trump got elected right uh, god knows i have my criticisms of the man but in, in all in all fairness right you can't go about criticizing uh whoever it is politically if you don't truly know what they stand for and if you are creating a straw man image which you are then looking to attack, um, and you know you're, you're purposefully outraged about everything that he does. You see, it's not like there's a, a moral standard uh, as far as uh, certainly as far as the press is concerned. There's no moral standard there uh, where they're measuring what he's doing as being morally correct or wrong, and then assessing him as they would any other president. No, this is just a case of being outraged for the sake of being outraged. That's what bothers me about this. They're not making any real criticisms at all about anything. you know. And this is fueling this whole thing. And the reason, part of the reason why this has happened, it's very uh, multifaceted, but part of the reason is because the uh, mainstream media has come to realize, well, they came to realize this probably about 10, 15 years ago, that the digital space was starting to outflank them, okay? Uh, they're outranked and outnumbered in terms of content creation on the internet. Uh, and because people are able to respond to situations in real time, 
the media has realized that they also uh, need to do the same thing in order to generate their own views, you see. So this is driving it. It's a very sick kind of circle that's developed. And so in turn, the media before, it wasn't quite this bad. You still had this phenomenon of, let's call it fake news, as Trump terms it. Uh, but that was primarily propaganda, right? Propaganda is pretty insidious anyway, regardless of who's doing it. But what we what we've now had isn't isn't a, an evolution of supreme propaganda. It's merely uh, the dog chasing its own tail, right? They're they're, they're trying to generate outrage because they know that sells. Okay, it's a, again, it comes back to being a business model. This is what it's all about. The outrage machine is a business model. And uh, unfortunately, because of human behavior, uh, in, in a general sense, we do tend to react to things very, very viscerally uh, if they're put to us uh, within a certain context, within a certain frame. So, you know, this is what's going on, this, this outrage machine. Now, what's making it a million times worse is social media because not only can you respond to things in real time which is fine okay you can do that but social media from the beginning has sought to manipulate purposefully okay that's the nature of the algorithms and it's the only business model like again it comes down to business it's the only business model that actually works right because uh, silicon valley were told back in the day that the only way uh, that they could really create this structure of the internet the way it has evolved was to make it into a viable business model which they could then float on the stock market be it apple microsoft google whoever right amazon whatever so in order to do that they've had to look at what sells the most they couldn't just do it as part public service and part um uh, you know, just uh, long-term investment in infrastructure. No, this this became uh, the primary thing for them. It, it was it's all about the money, 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 money. So when it when it turns into that, then it is it's not even wild west territory. Uh, it's a case of the greediest person, the most um, the most immoral person who is unchained from any moral restraints will win. Okay, you can break all the rules you like. Yeah, well, and that that's why social media is perfect because um, it's it is almost as if, well, maybe it is not almost, maybe maybe, maybe it is the, the case that so you have the media who is trying to tell you who to hate. It, it, it kind of re reminds me of the two minute hate from nineteen eighty four. You know the the scene where they all scream at the screen. You know to to kind of um, pump up the whole vibe of hating someone and and, and have, having the whole group behind you you know just it, it feels like a like you like you're stronger to to go on to, to go to go into battle so first is like well it is apparently a moral thing to hate donald trump so it would get me more attention and i can join people who do the same thing and if you've got 1200 friends on facebook and they all agree with you it's like you 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 actually have 1200 friends you know it's like it's it is almost as if these realities just kind of blend in into the physical reality you know the 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 this 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 artificial aspect of it all it's like um you you're 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 doing it for the likes and for the shares and but what if someone dislikes your comment or what what if someone blocks you from Facebook or unfriends you, you know, um, for saying something that they don't agree with. So, but that is all very easy because it's all being done on the internet, which is just, you know, one click and it's gone and you, you're, you're gone, you know, but what if you are in this, you know, in the same room with someone who doesn't agree with you, you, you cannot just block them. You know, you, you cannot just ignore them. Like, la, 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 la. you cannot really do that. Well, you, you can do that by, by the way, but I was, I was going to say, you can do that. That is, yeah. that is a, an option a person has. And actually that, that, that's, that is what, what a lot of these, uh, uh, left leftists then do, you know, the, the SJWs at schools, they actually scream into someone's ear trying to 
you know, <laughs> censor them in that way. So, so I guess that point didn't really work. <laughs> no, 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 you're actually completely right about that, if I may say, right? This is the problem here. People speak too much and they listen too little. Yep. All right, this is what I've noticed. They speak too much without knowing what the fuck they are talking about. Sure. Okay, and, and, and this is what does it. They're trying to drown everybody out with their nonsense, right? They're spouting gibberish most of the time, whether it's the extreme left, extreme right, I don't give a fuck. They're doing the same thing, right? It's just mm -hmm. scream, scream, scream. Yes, the left do it irrationally. The right, the extreme right, not the actual right, but the extreme right try to do it Ir, uh, ir, sorry, they do it rationally, right? So, or at least they're pretending to be rational about it when they do it. There, there is no, there is no. This is what I'm saying. There is no dialogue happening. People are shouting over each other. There's yeah. no conversation going on. That's not how you conduct a conversation. It's even yeah. Right? It's either that, or they just try to censor you or block you or unfriend you or in real life they try try to to kind of uh, you know get get you out of a job or just get you fired or you know in some way well there's a, there's a, a, a I would kind of go into that a little bit and say there's a little bit of nuance there and here's what I'll say cuz I'm a great advocate of blocking people by the way and people don't know this oh sure yeah right I love doing that and I'll tell you why because it's every person's right to associate with whomever they choose to associate with and disassociate from whoever they choose to disassociate from okay so that's the first thing you can block all you like i don't i don't it's, it's not my business what you do in your personal sphere right but there's a world of difference between that and then trying to get somebody fired from their job like purposefully yeah. doing something malicious and vindictive right that's where the the difference is uh, at, at that point, it stops being about your own personal sphere. It's about doing damage to someone else, right? And this is the thing. This is the fundamental problem. People don't understand this. Like you rightly said, they have meshed together in their own minds this delusional worldview where it's like the digital world is real, right? This is the way I've always seen it. And I don't know if this will help people or not. It might not, okay? God only knows. Maybe I'm... Uh, you know, wrong about this, but see the way I see it, the digital world isn't real. Okay, this is this is a make believe system of connections that people use either again as a, a business related networking tool, right, or uh, you use it to, in order to try and increase your own social standing digitally in the cyber world, but it doesn't work because it's not based on anything real. See, in order to form real friendships, here's something a lot of folks don't get. You have to have been through something together. You have to have real, see, see the real conversations happen in between things, like in, in real physical surroundings I'm, I'm speaking about here. So let's say you're sitting somewhere and you get to know somebody and, um, you know, uh, if it's at a, a, some kind of book club or whatever, right? You're, you're you're speaking to the person. It's not the actual main activity through which you're going to form your bond. It's going to be a lot of the small talk and the um, the body language, the non-verbal language. That's what does it. Okay. Now, the problem with with this digital world, with these social media platforms, is there's no body language. There's no nuance, there's no tone, there's no even sound of voice unless you're kind of communicating as we are here, right? But there's not, none of that. So you don't know. Uh, somebody could say something and, and they could mean it in a myriad of ways because here's the other problem. People are horrendous at expressing themselves, <laughs> okay? They, they, people don't know how to express themselves properly. And that's part of this is to do with the phenomenon of you know single motherhood and all this sort of business that's happened, the parental abandonment issue, which is central uh, in in a lot of people's lives. What that causes, you know, when it comes to the ch to, to the children who don't have both a feminine role model and a masculine role model, right? When that doesn't happen, and your parents don't teach you how interaction should work, because you don't learn from. And here's the other thing about teaching. You don't necessarily learn from what your parents tell you, okay? You learn from what they do. You learn from watching them. This is how we are designed as human beings, to learn from watching, okay? 
So if we don't have somebody there that can show us how we should act or interact with the world at large, then we grew up to be socially awkward human beings. Okay? So when that happens and you and you don't know how to read nonverbal cues and you don't know how to interact with people, well, you've got a world of problems just waiting to happen there. So you have to before um, the internet came along, you had to go out there into into the big wide world and then try and learn those things. And you'd fuck up a million times before that happened, right? But now you because people don't have to go out their own homes to interact with people. Well, now we've got a really big problem on our hands because there's no chance you're going to learn anything uh, about human interaction, human relationships. It's just not going to happen. And people are doubling down and getting more and more involved in, in this side of things. So this is the, the insidious part of technology. It's the sinister part of it. Yeah, I would like to, to kind, of, kind of make a point again of, of uh, you know, blocking someone. I mean, obviously, uh, that's your right. I mean, I wasn't try trying to say that that that's weak or anything. It's uh, I was just trying to kind of talk about how that is being done when with when someone simply doesn't agree with you. Like you have this feeling like I don't want you in my life anymore. You know, it's uh, it's more like 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 that. Yeah, yeah. But the the misleading term of social media is. I mean, how social is it really? Where you can, yeah, like you said, it's more like an anti-social media because you, you, like you said, the non-verbal um, aspect of communication is what ninety percent of the total communication. I don't know. Um, so all we see is words, you know, which is heavily filtered eventually through the process of thinking and c coming up with a thought, and then um, you know, just just. Just like you know, like uh, some st stoic um, philosopher, I forget the name. He's indeed he he said um, that he he would rather speak less or not not at all than just saying everything that he thinks right at at the very moment, because that would because you have you have this ability to to kind of process what you're thinking with with your own mind and. So when people are spouting all these messages or narratives, it, it is literally mindless because they haven't really thought it out yet because they heard something from, from the media or some other platform, I don't know, or some, some ideology, and they think, well, that sounds good to me. Let, let's just repeat that. And I've gone through, through the whole thing as well. I mean... I, I swung from the left to the right, and now it's just I don't know anymore. It's just I don't I don't even want to be there in the in the political left or right. It's like if you are on the left, then you, then you are stuck in your little left left wing bubble. And the same thing goes with the right. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't care about politics because I think I have to know. I would I would like to know what what the political leaders. Uh, have in store for us so what i would like to know the game that we're in so but i won't really affiliate anymore with a certain group because f for example two years ago i was really really interested in the alt-right i was like everything made sense and it's still still it, it does make sense for, for for a lot of a lot of things you know um but it's like as soon as i feel that it can become like a cult or a group or this yeah, like a group thing, then I'm like, well, I'm I should get out of here because I just I just really value my independence, uh, my authentic independence. You know, it's it's as soon it's like it's like having a band in a, in a way, and if you don't like the band, then you can try to talk with the guys from the band, and if 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 it doesn't work, then you know you can take the next step. But it's with with politics, it's like. You, it's it's already too too late if you if you affiliate with certain ideologies because it's really hard to get out of the brainwashing. I get, I guess. I mean, I'm I'm still not not saying that that everything from the right is 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 uh, wrong or from the left is wrong. I mean, it's it's about being centered instead of centrist or leftist or right rightist rightist. Um, but it's like who are you <laughs> right who what do you think regardless of what 
some people say or your favorite author says or your favorite professor says or your guru says it's like what what do you think and it, it is a hard process I, i'm i'm sure because i've been through that as well i've 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 been man i've been re re looking re researching everything that i've taught myself or told them at myself you know and and in a lot of instances i was just wrong and that is good because at least i will be a step you know towards the truth which is to me the important thing here yeah i mean i can say very much the same thing myself if i'm honest about it right which is to say this i was wrong in my 20s about what i believed the way that i perceived the world i was totally wrong about that okay because i thought that marx had some interesting things to see and it, it was po because at that time i was kind of looking at it through an egalitarian lens and i thought maybe it is possible for egalitarianism to win the day uh and uh where human beings would would simply just by default respect each other and you know all this business and but but that's not the case so my worldview was wrong in those days uh and then when i looked at the so-called rights ideas right and, and i call it the so-called right because again there is an authentic left and there is an authentic right but you don't get to hear them okay you don't get to hear the proponents of those ideas because they're not ideologies the people that are uh, the, the, that are thinkers in both of those realms are actually philosophers and they're open to exchanging ideas with each other right i, I was watching a very interesting um on a related subject i was watching a very interesting interview between um Oh, what was his name? That poet, uh, Alan something from the Beat Generation. You know the Beat poets. I, I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's Alan Ginsberg. That's Ginsberg. the that's the chap's name, right? Ginsberg. Uh, being interviewed by oh god, what was his name now? William something Junior. Uh, it's gone out my mind now. But uh, these two people who couldn't have been more diametrically opposed were sitting down having a very civil discussion right and and they were both agreeing with certain areas and disagreeing in certain areas right now we've lost that oh yeah <laughs> right we've yeah. completely lost that we've got in, instead we're just again as i say not able to speak to each other just as human beings and say well what do you think you know here's what i think about this and somebody might say, well, those are some interesting points, but here's something to maybe counter a ladder or whatever, right? That's not happening anymore. You see, yeah, that's the problem. We are literally back to name calling. Mm. <laughs> it's like, well, where's the conference conversation here? Where's the dialogue? It's nope, nope, racist, nope, Nazi, nope, nope, communist. <laughs> this is it. This is exactly what's happening, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's approached levels of, of, of absurdity uh, and this is kind of one of the points I was making in the last video again, is it's approached levels of absurdity, partly because the irrationalists that popped up in philosophy, like Kierkegaard, suggested that absurdity was the only way of understanding the chaotic events which surround us. You know, so, um, and that's an oversimplification again. But still, um, I think that's been taken to an extreme now, uh, by uh, especially through postmodernism. Um, or what we would term as being postmodernism. I don't necessarily know if the people that would that, that were part of that movement would call themselves postmodernists, but essentially that's what they are. That's what they did. They went beyond the modern. They were the they, they saw themselves as the next step. Uh, worse than that, they saw themselves as the Nietzschean Superman. Each each one thought themselves to be the Nietzschean Superman. So they had these very bizarre ideas of superiority. You know, it's really strange. Now, when when you emerge with that kind of mindset, you are negating the human experience of other people. And that's what's going on here. We're negating each other's experiences as human beings. We're saying, well, that person, they have less of a value than me uh, or, or whatever else. And these value judgments are actually, see if you really drill down into it, they're being made subjectively no matter which way you look at it. And that's the thing I found. And and this this terrifies me because if if we're pretending that our subjective judgment calls are somehow objective or rational, which is happening on the far right, and if we're pretending that 
there is no such thing as uh, ob objective facts, which is happening on the far left, then you're go you're going to end up, um, you know, uh, on a collision course, and it's it's going to tear entire countries apart, and it's going to tear entire households apart. It's going to tear everything apart that we know, which we call civilization. You know all this stuff about how uh, it's important, and I agree with this, by the way, that it's important to preserve the legacy of the West. Okay, I actually think that is true. We need to do that. We need to preserve the history of it all. Whether we'll be able to do that or not is another question. But you don't do that by then going around tearing down everything that built Western civilization, such, such as the ideals of freedom in favor of collectivism. You don't do that. It doesn't work. And this is exactly what's happening. You know, because here's here's the thing. People are reacting out of pure fear. Fear has been drummed into them through through constant propaganda, constant propaganda from every side. OK, because fear based thinking is what's ruling right now. OK, I'll give you a great example of this. The Middle Eastern world. OK, and, and this is these, these are controversial opinions I'm hearing here. I understand that a lot, a lot of people aren't going to like them. OK. But the Middle East is terrified constantly of being bombarded with bombs and missiles all the time because uh, one country after another has been invaded by these neocons, okay? And these neoliberals or whatever the hell else you want to call them, war hawks, okay? We keep invading, destabilizing other countries. The Middle East is scared shitless. The people living there are scared shitless constantly. So they're reacting out of fear. Then you get terrorists. Um, again, this is too simplified. I understand ideology is a part of it. Believe me, how do I know how serious and important that is? Because I've done presentations on it. I've studied the theology. Okay? A lot of people haven't. They, they want to talk out their ass. But this is the fundamental reality of it. So those people are reacting out of fear, and that's why they become a threat. Okay? Now you get another problem. Well, because those people are reacting out of fear, now you've got many Western people reacting out of fear, saying we should bomb more countries. Do you see what I'm saying? Fear is creating this inexplicable, vicious cycle that keeps spinning around and around and around. And this is the wheel of karma. You, you can't escape it. Unless you just decide, well, I'm not playing that game. I don't want to be a part of the fear or the hatred or anything else. I don't want to be a part of it. I'm not playing the game if the rules are unfair. I will not do it. Yeah. Well, and that that is, um, you know, I, I cannot really, really blame those who are in fear because it is it is frightening. The whole political, economical society is is is, is a frightening place because there there is this ease with which you can just bomb you know it's like you, you're, you're gone then but i mean what i don't understand is why people um don't want to consider the possibility that, that there's this long as agenda going on and this is you know what what you're seeing is not just some incident Oh, there's another another bombing. Oh, there's another this or that. No, it's when you look way, way, way back. I mean, it takes years. It takes perhaps a lifetime to fully understand. But this does not surprise me anymore. When you look back, you know, it has been written down, has been talked about, you know, endlessly. Uh, especially when you um, research the New World Order and such, and you know why that is just taking place right now and. Um, it all makes sense when you just can consider at least the fact that, yes, we are living in a conspiracy. And as you um, said in one of your videos, an occultocracy, because it is only that, <laughs> ultimately. I mean, everything has been occulted from us, and you have to de-occult it, which means that you are kind of a light worker in, in that sense, you know, but you have to be willing to, you know, accept that things are not as they seen which is a long process but yeah i mean that that is frightening but it's 
it's uh, useful to do. Yeah, I mean, there's there's different things that, that can be used as useful tools uh, through which you can get a better understanding of things. And one of those would be to understand, as you correctly say, John, that there is uh, an overarching agenda that has been in play for a very long time, at least at least 2,000 years overall. Yeah. And certainly it's kicked into overdrive over the last 160 years, right? And I've gone into a lot of this in, in extreme depth. But very few people are really ready to want to know a lot of this stuff, right? Like, why? Here's a basic example. Where on earth did the theology of Islam come from? Okay, that's a really seriously important question people need to ask. Where did it come from? If you were just to even look at it um, superficially, okay, and somebody said to you, go and read the Talmud. I'm deadly serious, right? If you said, go and read the Quran, then go and read the Talmud, people would be shocked at the absolute blatant similarity. The fact that both um, books are supremacist doctrines, advocating for the supremacy of one group or another group, okay, depending on which belief system they share. Well, then you ask the question, well, okay, so let's say the Quran, for brevity, let's say the Quran is derived from the Talmud. Where did the Talmud come from? Okay, how many people have gone and asked that question? Everybody goes, oh, it's the Jews, it's the Jews, right? Okay, yeah, well, let's look at that. Are you willing to drill into that a little bit to really properly explore that? Or are you just happy having a dumbass understanding? That's the genuine question I'm going to ask, okay? because a lot of people don't know. Well, when was the Talmud, the first, ed first written edition of the Talmud published? In the 1520s. Who published it? Oh, wait a minute. It was the Vatican. Pope Leo X. Has anyone looked at that? No, because they're too busy trying to um, uh, shift people away from truth, from true historical facts. Yeah. Right. They're too busy trying to do that to actually really sit down and say, well, how far back can we actually take this thing? Who was responsible for creating these ideologies? And you find out at the end of it, if you really properly drill into it, you'll find out at the end of it, it's the same people. OK, the uh, conspiracy, if you want to call it that, of the Roman Empire. Well, who ended up ruling the Roman Empire? What happened with the Masada? Right? How many people are out there asking these questions? Not very many. I can guarantee you that. You know, and, well, and, and yeah. people want to pretend that they know things. Well, most of the things that, that you said, I didn't know about as well. But um, by the way, I, I don't want to kind of uh, praise you here, but well, I guess I do. But uh, you have, you've made a lot of good points, uh, a lot of you shared a lot of wisdom over the past years, and uh, you were one of those rare guys that kind of brought something new to the conspiracy research, you know, if you can can, can call it like that. Um, so, so that that's that's what I would like to say first. But um, but it is mostly through your work lately that I've been looking, you know, more in history, just farther back. Um, and this does tie in a bit, I guess, with the um, social media because everything um, is fast paced, is instantaneously. It's like right now, right now, and right now, and more information, more headlines only, just headlines, you know. Um, but sorry, but history didn't begin with your life. It, I mean, it's long. It is a long history, and yeah. When you when you say you know it's the Jews it's the Jews okay well let's look at the, the Jewish thing then I mean there's a there's a truth in that I mean there's there's some some supremacy going on right there but you have you you can go even farther back and it's not not fun to to do that because you will see that things haven't really changed I mean the modern times they kind of brought a new flavor to it all and it might have might have actually um, sped up the whole process, if you will. Um, 
but yeah i mean this social media instantaneously this this in instant pleasure seeking or you know the attention span is just gone so i can actually admit that my mine has as has dropped as well uh, over the last years because of also of the good the good aspects of of, of facebook for example there's a lot of information there and and, and a lot of um quick um you know sound bites or just uh, videos that just you know are two minutes and there are several videos that call themselves um uh this and this in five minutes you know or explained in two minutes well you, you i mean that's that that won't that won't be enough i've got i've got books about about several things that i haven't even started reading because there's so much to, to know but i would like to have them for you know from when for example internet just will will fall apart or will all be censored or we we live in this certain dystopian society for you know when the power is out I, and, and i need to know things i mean just having books having to read having to physically turn the pages you know have you you using your actual hands and and starting you know, to to process what you're actually reading that is a skill nowadays it's it is beyond um headlines and beyond name calling and beyond scoffing at things you know it's like well do you want to understand or not well if you do then well here's <laughs> here's the whole library of you know the vast amount of in information that's that's out there still but yeah we we are being distracted you know from knowing the, the truth because everything has to be sensational everything has to be uh, like we said, edgy or controversial, just for the shock of it, you know. Oh, he didn't like <laughs> that, that. As if that's enough. Oh no, you're absolutely right. We've become a shock-oriented story, you know. In the old days, it was uh, Howard Stern; he was considered a shock jock, oh, right? Yeah. But that's tame in comparison to what we've got right now. Uh, the whole thing's out of control. The whole thing really is out of control. The social media phenomenon is very dangerous. It's getting people addicted. Uh, in ways that they don't recognize. It's actually also modifying their behavior. Okay, this is a very, very important point. People need to understand this. Uh, Facebook, for example, themselves admitted to this. They are trying to modify human behavior. Okay, this is not theoretical. They're already doing this. Twitter have been doing it for a long time as well. All these major Silicon Valley giants one of the things you have to understand about them, if you don't already get this, is that they all were birthed out of a CIA slush fund. Okay, that's what they come from. They are designed to do what they are doing. These conglomerate companies, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about, um, they don't care about your well being. Let me tell you exactly what all of this is about. And this is going to shock people, right? I know we've kind of veered off course from what we were talking about. But here's the thing. The entirety of technology that has been rolled out to this point is for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to categorize you. That's what all these algorithms are doing. Go if, if, if you're a computer programmer, okay, and you can get access to the codes that they're using in, let's say, YouTube or Google or whatever else, right? You, you go through that, and you will see that all these algorithms, what they're designed to do is to categorize. Why do you think they're doing that? Why do you, in my, I can't think why that might be the case. Hmm, let me, let me think about it. Let me wonder on that, you know? It's not like the Soviet Union did that before they started mass executing people. Hmm. It's not like Nazi Germany did that with, in cahoots with IBM. Hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? That couldn't be the case, surely. You know? But people are too fucking daft to understand what is coming is the mass um, extermination of human beings. And this will sound out there to a lot of people until it happens, by the way, right? I'm fully aware of that. I understand that. But once this starts happening, this, this mass extermination of human beings is going to happen and AI is going to be responsible for that. I am telling you this right now. Now, you will you will ignore this at your peril. I assure you of that. And all and how are the, how is that going to happen? Well, here's kind of loosely speaking how this is going to happen. AI is going to look at you and say, how easily are you swayed 
by propaganda. Okay. Um, and there's going to be reasons why they're going to have that sort of um, algorithm in order to separate people out. I'm not going to go into that here, but there are going to be reasons behind that. So if you're swayed to the left, well, there's no use for you because you're too daft, right? This is the way that the, the ultimate rulers, if you like, see this. If you're daft enough to fall into the rat trap that they have created, this maze, this Skinner box, okay, that they've created, if you're daft enough to engage in that, well, then you've just proven that you're unworthy because they have this kind of, again, complex, God complex, where they think they know better, right? So if you, if you fall into that category, you're done. You're toast, okay? Now, if you fall into the other category, same thing. Why? Because you're swayed by propaganda. So where's your own willpower? See, what they're looking for, I'm, I'm not going to make any bones about this. I'm going to tell you flat out, point blank, right? What they're looking for, these rulers, is to find people like themselves who are supermen like them, okay? So if they see you have the willpower to resist the programming, to resist the temptation to be part of the crowd, right? to assert your own individuality and you insist on it, bizarrely, that is the only way you're going to live. Okay? This is the thing. Whether you want to or not, no matter how much you yourself might disagree with them, okay, with the rulers, that's what's going to happen. They consider you more worthy of life than everybody else. It's a sick way of looking at things, but that's the way they look at it. Yeah. Well, we have been trained to uh, follow the herd for a long time um, because it feels nice. I mean, it feels nice to have friends, right? But ultimately, you'll end up in, in a cage with, with all your friends. So what's, <laughs> what's the deal here? So I can really, I cannot really add anything to what you just said. I mean, it's just, I agree. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know. What can I say? There's only so much I can do. There's only so much you can do, John. There's only so much other people, great researchers out there like Michael Sarian can do. You know, there, there's 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 only so much, let's say, my friend Rocking Mr. E can do to help people understand things. There, there's only so much anyone can do, right? People can keep telling you things, right? But, but very few people will listen, okay? And uh, recently, another friend of mine uh, who, who runs the Semiogog channel, uh, Oliver, he got... Um, uh, banned from YouTube. Well, he got two strikes and then, uh, yeah, he's pretty much banned from uploading to YouTube now and all sorts of this business, right? Because he was hitting too close to home, right? He was hitting home truths in, in a lot of his videos. But uh, again, what happens is, see, people don't like the truth, okay? People run away when somebody tries to tell them something that they know is true because it reflects upon them, because it forces them to admit to the fact that they um, might not be intelligent enough or they might not be, uh, you know, uh, up to the challenge or whatever of, of, of understanding it or accepting it. And so people are running away from themselves, really. Everything we do, by the way, this is another, just, just a quick point that I want to make. Everything we do in terms of how we interact with people is a reflection of how we're interacting with ourselves within. And um, too many people right now are ill at ease with themselves, you know? So that's why they're projecting, 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 and, and then you get all this conflict. Really, the conflict is within them, right? But they're, but they're putting it out there as if it's, it's, you know, the other person causing whatever it is. Um, but this is, this is part of the reason why uh, people really need to study branches of philosophy even in the east like taoism for example right or buddhism it will help them to grasp what it is that's going on within themselves psychologically in their own minds you know but but again that's too much hard work it means you need to do work on yourself you can use western branches of of inquiry to do the same thing by the way just right? something just do something yeah yeah psychoanalysis works brilliantly if you're willing to do it but not enough people are. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get all this conflict. Everybody wants to fight. Everybody wants to fight. Why? Yep. You know what, what? What is it about fighting that gets your rocks off? Right. This is what I don't understand about human beings today. We understood when all these major conflicts happened in the twentieth century, twenty first century. Right. We understood how bad it is, and yet we keep doing it. That's the definition of madness. Doing something over and over again when you know it doesn't work. So how about we try something different? But again, people don't want to. You know, it's too easy to to label people Nazis. It's too easy to label people uh, whatever, you know. And instead of speaking to the person, right? That's all they've got to do. And But here's the thing. In order to be able to do that, and this is another point I made recently, as, as I'm sure you probably know, uh, so I, I kind of feel like I'm preaching to the converted here, really, in a great many ways. But we are failing young people today like has never been seen before, particularly through the schooling system. Okay, We're not um, teaching them the proper rules of linguistics. We're not giving them an adequate vocabulary uh, through which they can express themselves. So when they're having these interactions on social media, which relies, as John, you correctly pointed out, it relies solely on words and sometimes emojis and stuff as well, but generally it's words, <laughs> right? So if you've got a medium that relies upon words, but you don't understand the first thing about words because the schooling system is designed to be inadequate, it's designed to produce obedient slaves, then how on earth are you ever going to be able to converse with anyone in any real meaningful way on social media? So why are you using it at all? See, it defeats the logic of the damn thing. Yeah, well, I think many problems we face now um, are due to the fact that we, we're lacking knowledge of the metaphysical, the, the spiritual, the philosophical. It's only this harsh materialistic viewpoint or it is this this um, dominant digital age and there's no in between it's it's everything happens on the screen even what we're doing now happens on the screen but it's at least we're having a philosophical debate or a, a talk you know we we can we can we can see each other uh, we, we can we can not only hear each other's words but we can kind of intuitively feel what the emotion behind it is, uh, e even though we're not in the same room, but it, at least it's a, it's a step closer to the, the real thing. And um, so I think the whole um, you know, laughing at, um, for, for example, Eastern uh, wisdom, like, oh, these, these, that, that's primitive, you know, um, or, several divination arts, you know, astrology or K Kabbalah or pneumology. I mean, those are, uh, those are metaphysical. Those are, but they speak more truth than goddamn Facebook, you know, or the AI aspect of life. But people expect some answer, some, some clear cut, some, some packaged labeled, you know, thing, what it is. But the thing is with these occult, or divinatory arts is it demands introspection because it is introspective. I mean, this if I were to um, if I was stranded or stranded or some on some island and I got and I have to take one book, it would probably be the Tao Te Ching, Tao Te Ching, or Tao Te Ching, um, because it is super super in intuitive and introspective. There's everything that's that is being said there is not really literally about actual things it's an example of that 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 makes you think about a certain situation and that kind of demands you to think how would you react what what do you do in this kind of situation what are you really all about you know so it's the kind of it's a book that you don't read to kind of uh rush to the end of it you know to, to kind of know the script because it, <laughs> because that is what what we're we, we're we're used to and that for example in the movies i don't want to go too much uh, off topic but i've seen and i i somehow just managed to always talk about jurassic park in every 
uh, thing I can get. But I have seen the last Jurassic Park. I was a big fan of Jurassic Park. But the last one, oh my god. I had, I was tempted to walk away because why? Because everything was fast, instant, and uh, easy, and and like really superficial, which kind of you know they they marketed that to the audience, which is exactly as superficial as 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 you know no with with no um, attention span. So everything had to be done in a certain amount of time. So explosions. Uh, blood attack teeth you know it's like well at least you had i mean and the whole of the movie was practically digital so that's a that's another thing so it, it does tie into the whole culture we have created uh, i don't know if we have created it but it has been created for us to serve a certain <laughs> goal but it re reflects in everything even in art and in, in music in movies and Politics really is every, everywhere. It's like no one wants to do the hard, the actual work, you know, the, the philosophical work, not the ideological work. Yeah, I completely agree with that. This is, this is the, the, the core of the problem, really. You know, how well do you know yourself? Know thyself before you go out into the world, right? But people, people don't know themselves. People don't even know what's motivating them. Oftentimes, if you ask them, I've found this, I don't know, this is just a, 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 a off-the-cuff remark, I suppose, with regards to what I find uh, when it comes to people in general. But oftentimes, if I, say, if I ask somebody, why did you do this thing that you've done? They'll say, I don't know. They'll shrug their soldiers, so shoulders and say, I don't know, right? Um, and sometimes it's worse than that. Sometimes they'll try and post-rationalize it and say, oh, I did that because X, Y, and Z. Then I go, is that why you really did it? Like, think deep and hard about that, right? And, and again, you know, that startles them because they don't expect to be asked that because they assume that they're going to be taken at face value, right? Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's a curious thing that we don't recognize uh, that people... Here's another thing, right? Uh, tell me what you think about this. This is just a thought off the top of my head. But oftentimes I find people actually tell you who they are. And we don't pay attention because we don't believe what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a great example of this. Uh, you know that famous Marilyn Monroe quote, right? I'm this, I'm that, I'm whatever, but, you know, I still deserve everything or whatever, however the hell it goes. I'll, I'll try and search for it on here or something, right? <laughs> right? But there's that thing where I'm selfish, I'm vain, da 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 right okay fine right uh but you should accept me anyway and i'm so lovely you oh, know that, this business that, that's what you mean yeah 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 you, you see what i'm saying there yeah. so the first bit of that is truthful right the person is telling you i'm sure our viewers will know what the hell i'm talking about right but the person is telling you who they are and we are refusing to believe them and this is something i only realized very recently by the way in the last uh, four months Right? People will tell you who they are, but then they try and camouflage it. So that shadow side of them is going to come out anyway, some in some way, shape, or form. Right? But we choose to ignore that because we've been taught uh, such a load of hogwash, again, through this material schooling system, which demands that, uh, you know, everything be backed up by X, Y, and Z when really X, Y, and Z aren't quite as solid as what they think they are, right? But anyway, that's a matter for another time. Point being that we dismiss it because we think, oh, well, you know, no, the person can't really be like that or whatever else, right? It's, that's not the case. The person is a part of them. A part of every human being is seriously dark, <laughs> okay? And it, it, there's a malevolence in all of us. And we we pretend that isn't there day in and day out. Every day in our interactions, people think that we're, you know, because they look at us through these various lenses, right? Um, they don't see the true us. We don't even see the true us unless we start introspecting. Um, yeah, it's funny because I saw this T-shirt that said, I only date millionaires. And I'm like, well... If you well, who buys that shirt? I mean, 
if you buy that that shirt i only date millionaires that is a statement i mean it's not you you cannot really shrug it off i mean i wouldn't buy it <laughs> and i'm sure you you wouldn't buy it but it's it's like so you 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 you're wearing this this shirt I I only date millionaires. So you you just you you met some you you meet some guy and uh, he's a really nice guy and everything clicks and it's all fine, but he's not a millionaire. But you're wearing the shirt. So what are you trying to tell me? You know, is is it like you wish you you know how how do you see me then? I mean, why did you buy? The, I mean, I can maybe I'm kind of over analyzing this, but I've seen. Uh, what you've said about that people tell you who they are mostly on t-shirts as well it's like it's like um there, there's this shirt as well it's like or this saying i don't know but but it has been printed on shirts like uh what, what's it say um if you can't handle me at my worst you don't deserve my best or something like like that it's like this bitchy vibe you know like and and then so that's a very narcissistic way of trying to <laughs> to get a date, I guess. But this brings me on to exactly what I was it's just going through my mind as you were saying that as well. It's the narcissism, right? Oh yeah. There are so yeah. many people in society today. Okay, and I'm not I'm not um disincluding myself if you like, right? I'm a part of this. Why? Let me let me tell you. Listen, we've all got to be honest about stuff for goodness sake, right? I wouldn't be on YouTube in any way, shape or form if I didn't have some part of me that was narcissistic in some regard. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that point blank, okay? And so nobody escapes unscathed when it comes to issues of narcissism um, or when it comes to issues of, um, you know, uh, other types of personality uh, deficits, let's call them, right? The problem occurs when you don't recognize it, when you refuse to accept it and you say, well, you know, I'm not narcissistic. And it turns out you're probably the most narcissistic person in the damn room. Right. Right? Because you're refusing to acknowledge that, right? Now, that doesn't mean narcissism is necessarily a bad thing. Here's the weird part of it. It can help you accomplish a lot. Okay, it can help you accomplish a lot in your life if you've got that cockiness, that cocky attitude, that you know, um, nonchalant sort of uh, manner about you, right? Which I, um, I freely admit, I have a little bit of that, right? But at the same time, if you say, "Well, that's not a part of me," and I, I, I could never be like that, right? Well, here's the thing: a lot of times, narcissists will see somebody else who's a narcissist, right? And they'll totally dislike that trait in them, not realizing that they themselves have that trait. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is this is key. So when that happens, you know, the narcissist is forced to acknowledge something about themselves and someone else. Because here's what's happening with reality. This is another thing, right? And, and I've already kind of outlined this in other videos, but just to reiterate for for some of the new folks, so. We are in our own minds subjectively, okay? We perceive the world subjectively as individuals because we are in an individual container. Therefore, we will have our own perception and perspective, okay? It's, it's a perfectly sensible, logical premise. Now, when we are interacting with the outside world, we are then taking in the input from out there, okay? Which, which is the objective reality, and then we are re-subjectivizing it when we interpret that data from our sensory perceptions. Okay, then we're projecting out again. It's a weird kind of thing, but basically a lot of your interaction with the world isn't directly with the world. It's actually through a subjective lens. You're not interacting directly with objective reality most of the time. And this, is, this by the way, is a question that philosoph philosophically um, scientists and philosophers are still asking today. Where is that boundary between subject and object? Where do we start yeah. interacting with the outside world? If we acknowledge there is an external world, then at what point do we start uh, having an impact on it? Some people have suggested, and this is not as nuts as it sounds, by the way, right? Because if you really look at it, 
Some people have suggested it's on the level of thought. Just our thoughts have an effect out there in external reality. Others would say, well, no, it's more a case of your thought gets transmitted to your um, functional body parts or whatever, and then you can have an influence on reality, right? It's, it's, it's an interesting way of looking at things, whichever way you look at it. But no matter how you slice that cake, the, the fact of the matter still is um, that that is the way in which we are really interfacing with what's out there. Yeah, and, and what, what they're doing now is bypass all that and they implement the AI world. So you don't even have to answer it. No, you don't even have to be philosophically about it just because you won't have any chance because um, they will implant a certain a fake reality just that, that that kind kind of answers everything, you know. Um, but I would ask, have you ever seen a tree? Have you ever have have you even seen the creek? You know, have you even have were you there? It's like, yeah. I was in a forest. Yeah, it was nice. It was, it's, you know, but have you? Were you really there? I mean, I've had these experiences a c couple of times where I, I was like, "Wow, I'm really here. I'm. This is really. What the fuck is a tree? Really? I don't even know what a tree is, but I'm, it captivates me. It, I don't. I cannot explain it. And and it goes through the ground. What? I don't. I don't even understand what it was. And it it was here before I got here. So. You're, you're, it, it's a disgrounding experience. Like you are definitely here, but are you aware of the fact that you, that you're here? Well, I don't know. Let, let's go home. <laughs> it's, and then, then we will go back on, on, on Facebook and like commenting on stuff. And then, uh. <laughs> yeah, I must say you've had a deprived childhood if you don't know what a tree is. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I'm you just know. joking. I'm joking. Oh, no, well, well, that's actually a good point, but yeah, uh, no, I'm, 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 yeah. Because um, the, the the youth is now really bombarded with technology, you know, iPads, iPhones, laptops, MacBooks, um, all the. Uh, there's even apps that tell you what tree you, you're looking at, for example, or where <laughs> where to find the nearest uh, coffee shop when you're in in the woods. You know, it's it's like yo, well, it's all nice, but I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's well. It's one of those things we're caught between uh, our inner conscious being and the reality of also being a physical being, right? This is why it's the realm of the metaphysical, right? People don't understand metaphysics. It's, it's, it's a step above the physical, but it's reliant very much on the physical processes being there in order for it to express itself in this uh, ultimate reality, right? So um, to disconnect the spiritual from the physical is idiotic. And too many people do that. And at the same time, to to say that well, there's only the physical, or there's there's only the spiritual, uh, that that that's a, a bad state of affairs for a person. You don't have a holistic worldview of who you are or what you are. Um, in order to exist in this reality, you have to subsist in it, which requires sustenance. Uh, you have to eat. You have to sleep. Um, all of these bodily functions have to perform uh, optimally. Let's say, right. Um, and that ultimately helps you spiritually as well. This is actually part of the thing about what, what I was saying in terms of how the, the um, rationalists and the founding fathers were looking at it as well. There's a reason why they came to the conclusion that the material realm matters. Okay, The mistake people make in interpreting their work is to then say, oh, well, only materialism matters because they haven't understood the foundational principles of it. You know, it's, it's, it's lunacy what's happening out there. This is this is what happens, I think, when you have a totally inadequate education system, you have a broken down society that does not function. There are no adults, no spiritual teachers, no sages, no mystics out there uh, trying to teach people uh, uh, directly. We're out of all of that, right? There, there have been people before that came along to teach, right? And people did want to learn from them, and they did learn from them. But this current era, okay, this, this, this 21st century is devoid of all of that. We've got fake everything. This is what annoys me about it. And I guess I'm kind of going on a little bit of a Howard Beale rant here, you know? 
You have meddled with the primeval forces of nature, nature. and you will you atone. <laughs> <laughs> you will atone. <laughs> you do it so much better, man. Do it again one more time. And you will atone. I've actually oh, used that in a song of mine. Did you? Yeah. Uh, I needed to listen to that one, man. But um, <laughs> do it. please do. <laughs> so, um, what was I say? Yes. So this thing, you know, where we've where we've um, where we've got everything that's fake, fake teachers, okay, fake universities, the institution's still there by name, but really it's not the same thing anymore, right? Fake governments, fake countries, fake leaders. I mean, the height of it is that we've got a reality TV star as president of the United States. <laughs> I find that brilliant, right? Because course, it's a yeah. it's an indictment of the times we're living in. It's nothing to do with Trump. It's an indictment of the times we're living in when that's what it's come down to, right? Yeah. So it is literally, I mean, this you're living in a world of fakeness right now, and that's going to continue, right? Because it is the age of Maya, as the Buddhists might have put it, or the Hindu philosophers might have put it, the illusion appear stronger than the reality you know now this is this is another quick point finally uh, i'd like to make before i go directly to the chat again and see what everybody's been chatting about because i've been keeping an eye on it here and there but um mm -hmm. see spiritual teachings okay or metaphysical teachings of any nature um it's wrong to see that they can uh, exist independently of the world. The spiritual teacher must be aware, have total awareness, okay, of everything uh, that exists in the human realm, as well as the um, metaphysical. So the true spiritual teacher cannot be divorced from that. Like a true spiritual teacher can't be divorced from the from understanding economics. Okay, I've said this, and people got pissed off when I said this because they didn't want to know. Because all they've you know all they've come across are these kind of pretend um, Indian mystics, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many of them. There's all these god men. There have been some brilliant documentaries exposing all this charlatanism, right? Um, and the same thing happens in the world of psychics and astrologers and this and that and ooh, all this spooky, superstitious nonsense, right? This malarkey. But a, a real spiritual teacher understands what is going on in all of these realms, whether it's politics, whether it's economics, whether it's uh, the concept of ethics, ethical frameworks, constitutions, you name it. Because you, you're otherwise... Um, Otherwise, you're disconnected and, and living only in the realm of spirit then, and that's useless because you can't tell anybody about that thing, you know, through through any external mean, means. You, you might be able to sit in a cave and meditate until you reach some form of enlightenment. But if you can't communicate that to other people, well, then it's a purely selfish act anyway, right? So uh, this is why I'm saying most of these people that pose as spiritual teachers or mystics aren't. Be very wary of that. And the second point I'd make is there is no such thing as a spiritual teacher that has not had a spiritual experience themselves. Okay? This is key. Now, too many people out there in the world at large want to tell you what spirituality is all about. Right, and they've never had a spiritual experience in their life of any kind. Never, never experienced some sort of metaphysical realization or moment of enlightenment um, or anything along those lines at all. Yet they're the ones schooling you. All these priest classes. One of the ways that I try and explain this is: if you've never had a direct experience of God, you you have no right, no business talking about God. But you've got all these Billy Graham types, haven't you? Right? Who who kind of preach to the masses and you know all this business? They don't know the first thing about God. They've never sat there and fully experienced godliness, 
right? The presence of godliness. They've never experienced that. So how the fuck, pardon my language, how the fuck can they actually ever tell anybody else what it's all about? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a, it's, it's a, it's mostly, I think, a marketing scheme <laughs> because they know that people are looking for answers from the divine, but they don't really know what that is. And I'm not, I'm not, I cannot say that I know for a fact what it is, but I do know that being, you know, when I play a song or some, something like that, I'm in direct contact with something that is alien to what I know my, myself to be but it still feels more close to home than what I am in you know, society. You know? So that feels to me godlike or godly. It feels like I am a god of this particular reality that I'm currently in, you know, um, because there's something that is being translated with, without words, without even without feelings. It's just something different, you know. I think only, well, not... Uh, well, not only, but I think especially people who are in the arts, you know, art world, they, I think they can kind of uh, recognize what I'm saying. It's like time is a, is a, is, is an illusion then you know, the whole concept of time and tomorrow and yesterday, and it's, it doesn't exist because you are creating. And that is some spark from, I don't know where, but. And, and I've had that d- during my, my psychedelic trips over the years. But, <laughs> but it's, it, I mean, that's externally induced then. But um, yeah, there's a lot, lot of fakery because there's money to be found there. So it goes back to the element of business again, doesn't it? It's a, it's a money making so, so, racket, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But um, to touch upon the thing that you were saying, it's an interesting thing because Every human being, if you want to think about it in the monotheistic sense, okay, because some people have that kind of perspective, which is fine too. There can be multiple perspectives which can which can bizarrely be equally right. Not an infinite number of perspectives, but multiple perspectives. So if you if you think about it in a monotheistic sense, then we're all expressions of God's uh, amazing grace, let's say. Okay. Every human being, therefore, is. We're all part of the greater whole. Okay, this is the thing. We are all a part of it. We all started at the same place. We came out of the same sludge. If you want to think about it in evolutionary terms, we all came out of that. You know, the origins of the universe, we were dead matter. Now we're living. What's that all about? You know, we came from the same place. It's just some of us have chosen to do horrific things with the gift of life and others have chosen not to. Strange as it may be. But that's the godly aspect, if you want to call it that. And by the way, the word God comes from the Proto-Germanic. It just means the good, right? So the goodness is there, right? It's, it's in conjunction with some, with, with some of our worst aspects as well. But, but good, good, good does exist. Yep. You know, we, we make this mistake too many times of thinking it's not there because, again, this is another mind manipulation technique where you're told to look at the world through a very dark, bleak lens. And it's like, a you know, the only thing that you can see is a pure hellish nightmare. And right now, granted, it kind of is. right. It's not too far off <laughs> no, from yeah, the truth. Yeah. But it's not the only thing which exists. Do you see? It's not the only thing which exists. There's a lot of good inside human beings which still exist today. And to not acknowledge that is just as great a sin as not acknowledging the evil that's happening as well. You know? And uh, the other thing I would say is the illusion of time is, this is a very true thing you said, and one of the reasons why um, artists probably understand this better is because they function mostly from the right hemisphere of the brain, which is the artistic side, okay? Loosely speaking, I mean, it's not entirely just down to the right hemisphere. Information gets passed to the left so that it can be expressed. But generally, it's an abstract notion, okay? Artists are brilliant at understanding abstract notions. Now, reality itself, the very fabric of it is actually abstract. Any physicist, any philosopher will tell you this. It's abstract. 
That's why you can express it in numbers. What are numbers? They're an abstract notion. They represent things really well, but it's an abstract notion. Okay, it's an abstract idea. Now, the problem that we have in the world today, and it's a massive problem, it's a very serious one. I was actually talking to somebody about it very recently, uh, someone who I respect and admire a lot. I made the point that uh, we've got too many word thinkers in this world. Everybody's a word thinker. I mean, even what we're doing here today, you and I, right, as productive and useful as it is, it's word thinking, right? We're thinking with words. Yeah. And we're expressing it in all these words. But it's a very clumsy way, if I'm truthful about it, it's a very clumsy way of transmitting ideas. Because you only approximate the idea, no matter how many descriptives you give and whatever else. You're just approximating the damn thing. You're not actually able to express that thing in itself. This is where art comes in, because art can do that directly. An image says, you know, uh, 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 a picture says a thousand words. Why is that? Because the picture expresses the entirety of the thing to the person perceiving it. This is why art matters. You know, artists matter, but we don't we don't seem to want to acknowledge that in this day and age because we've got these pol polarities now, you know, it's like hyper rationalism, let's ignore the artists and on the other side you've got no no no, there's only the art and then you're ig ignoring the the rest of the world which does think in terms of um analytical uh reasoning and logic. Right. And as um as Heidegger pointed out, logic blows itself apart when it's actually dealing with the abstract, you know, but people need to recognize and understand a whole bunch before um, they'll really be able to resolve the conflicts. And one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing is actually to put that information out there so that it gets disseminated into the, into the public arena. This is one thing um, I noticed is that the stuff I put out there two years ago, right, two, three years ago, when I came onto YouTube, that stuff has now made it into the public arena. So the way the way I'm seeing it right now, and I don't know if it's necessarily completely the case or not, but there's a, a two to three year lag between the material I'm putting out there and what's getting disseminated into the public consciousness. So I'm hopeful that by putting more material out there that helps people to join up the different bits and pieces to, to, to join the dots together, to connect the dots, maybe we'll get to a point where all hell doesn't need to break loose. You know, that's, that's hopefully the aim uh, which which can be reached. But I don't know. Well, I think you're you're doing a, a, a great job at that. I mean, ultimately, it's just, you know, we need to get more philosophical. Um, that's the only thing I mean. Yeah, we can we can analyze politics, you know, it, but it gets so it's just focusing on this amount of of what it all is about. And I mean, people from hundreds or thousands of years of, 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 you know, philosophizing, they have just written it all down and they were just thinking they were just thinking out loud. They were writing it down and they were, they were just thinking human beings and and feeling human beings and it's like with the advent of the whole digital you know cage that we are in <laughs> um we're not even incentivized anymore to to even want to to know it's it's like well i don't i don't care well i mean everything will will die eventually our fate is to die you know <laughs> um i guess we share that fate but you're still living as well. I mean, isn't our fate also to, to live? You know, well, do you even know what that means? Are you, are you even aware that you you are that your whole body is doing things that you didn't think about? <laughs> it's to keep you alive. So, kind of need to honor that. If yeah. Yeah. No. Sorry. I was just saying um, that that's completely right. You're absolutely right about that. You know, this this um, this lack of respect we have for ourselves. You know, where does this come from? Why do we hate ourselves so much? Right. Why is it as human beings we have this self-loathing? 
And this is part of the reason why we're seeing um, political discord as well. You know, it comes from self-hatred. People have been taught to hate themselves so much for things that they never did. Right? It doesn't matter where you are on the political spectrum. If you're if you're told to hate yourself for things that you were not directly individually responsible for, how can you ever um, view things with an honest lens? You're never going to be able to. You'll be too busy trying to destroy yourself because you hold yourself responsible for whatever. True. Right? It, it becomes a, a state of self annihilation. Yeah, and uh, and the things that, that that I post on on Facebook, the nihilism uh, memes, they're funny because it makes you think as well. It, I mean, at some point, you 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 have to summon up a certain you know a certain amount of laughs at at the fakery of it all. It's just so absurd that you, you I mean you you can't make this up. It's like everything is fake. You, everything is fake. And why would you be bothered by by some force or some group who tries to uh, you know reel you in into the fakery? And but as soon as you are expressing something real, well, then you're either not um, seen or appreciated, or you're actually being hated for speaking the truth or being your yourself. Uh, or at least you're being challenged. And just by the fact that um, someone like me, for example, I, um, I mean, to make music, to write music is just what I do. It's just who I am, and I cannot really stop that. But it is, it, it, I mean, it's, it, it has been a challenge to kind of keep the motivation, although I am inspired. But when I get demotivated, it's not because I am not inspired it's because um what i put out is not for the masses apparently i would like it to be and the second question is then well do i want it to be for for the masses i mean i think that my music is more is deeper than the average pop song i mean i don't use vocals but still sound is a sound is a very <laughs> powerful thing i mean Right, so uh, we need to get more in touch with ourselves, whatever that is, and you need to be introspective. And that, that's, that's, I mean, to some people it's not fun. It wasn't fun for me at the beginning because, I mean, you, you, you go back in your youth and in, in, and, and in the future perhaps, and you, you see things that you have done and you haven't done. It's like, well, it's all part of me. It's still, I'm still me, you know, even if I'm, if I don't like myself right now, or if I made some some mistake, it's still me, and I'm still here to live. And it, you know, I'm, you you don't have to be harsh on yourself that that much, you know. And to hate your, yourself, especially when it's in, <laughs> when it's imposed on you to hate yourself. For example, the whole uh, white guilt, you know, white people feeling bad about their about their past. It's like well that's that is the, the the racial thing but people in general especially here in the modern uh world they express a certain self-hatred that they are that they are really not really aware of i mean just eating badly or um thinking uh, too many negative stuff about themselves and then being overly dramatic for example it's all just it's not nice it's not nice to yourself you know, and that is what you're expressing outwardly, and that is what what's being picked up, and so the whole loop will um, grow, I, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. It's part of a pathology. It's part of a pathological set of behaviors, right? You're in a state of suffering because you don't know how to integrate the very worst aspects of yourself with the very best aspects of yourself. So you're eating away at yourself constantly. You know, and, and it, it does express itself in daily life, whether it's through your diet, whether it's through your habitual behaviors or whatever. Um, you know, we're all doing something and I'm not excused from this. OK, we're all doing I'm doing things all the time and I'm, I'm learning how to um, not do those things as each day passes, you know, but it's it's a process. 
This is the other thing people forget. You're not going to wake up one day and then suddenly, oh, I've integrated my my worst aspects with my best, right? That's <laughs> not right. It's not going to happen. It takes years. Okay, and that's what people don't want to hear because we're living in an age of instant gratification. Again, right. thanks to social media, right? Yeah. It's like uh, this hyper stimulus, right? We're being we're being bombarded with it constantly, right? And we, in, in that kind of environment, you can't really do much with yourself or to yourself uh, in order to become that which you truly are within, right? Can't be done. So in a very real way, what you have to do, and this is what I had to learn, was to disconnect yourself. It's to disconnect yourself, right? I've disconnected myself from social media entirely. Right, I, I won't interact with people on social media anymore. I've shut down my accounts. I have no intention of going back to it. Aside from this YouTube thing, mostly because that's the only way I can really um, put information out there right now. That might change in future. I might do something else like uh, take up writing again, right, and, and, and express myself through that instead. Um, but there's no need to subject yourself to that constant torture or, or that constant self-punishment of, um, oh, if I put up, because uh, this is what happens in people's minds. I've seen all these articles about this, these young people, you know, they, they, they're constantly judging themselves, self-censoring, all this business. Oh, if I put up this post, will this get me enough likes or, you know, yeah. will people... And, and, and the other problem, by the way, it's not just that. The other problem, it's not just a social media addiction. That's a problem. It's also the behavior of people when they become like pack rats, okay, when they become pack oriented, where um, they start hunting people in a predatory manner. This, this is what, you know, people call it these euphemistic names like trolling. That's not what's going on. These people are hunting in large packs in order to damage people, to damage their psyche, and they're doing it purposefully because there's a part of the human being, right, which is animalistic, which is predatory, and they've tapped into that. That's what's going on. And so when people are putting things up and people, other people are attacking them, that's a demonstration of that animalistic side of man, you know? Without without saying, maybe there's, you know, we'll just ignore this. Why aren't you capable? Here's my question. And I had to ask this question, I'll be honest. I had to ask this question of myself. Why aren't you capable of ignoring somebody's idiotic posts where, wherever? Or, you know, um, why do you feel the need to post something here and there? Like, this, I had to do a deep self-inquiry mm. about this, Right. It's like, why should I feel the need to do anything like that? Or, or you know, good one. what's the point? Because those people, see, here's the thing. People who are entrenched in their beliefs aren't going to change their mind anyway. Right? So there's no point on in um, confronting them in a manner that is just going to alienate them further. Right? And at the same time, there's also equally... A load of sludge, psychic sludge, that they'll put into into your life. Oh yeah, right. Because there's a whole lot of people out there like that because they are unfulfilled human beings. It's a lot of them, uh, and and they want to shove that in your direction. So if you're smart enough, what you'll do is you'll sidestep all of that and say no, thank you. Right. I have my own sludge to deal with. I don't need yours. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we, we are hyper-focused on someone else and on the external world only that we forget that we are actually in it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a pointless exercise. I mean, it can be useful. Here's the thing that people get wrong about social media. It is a useful tool, but in the following way. It's a publishing platform. Okay, this is where you what you don't understand about it. People, it's sold to people as a way of connecting with friends and family and this and that. None, nothing of the sort applies, as you probably saw with the Senate hearing regarding Facebook. Right, the conclusion people are coming to in in the justice system is that it's a publishing platform. Yeah. All social media is a publishing platform. 
Okay. So um, to treat it as anything else or to sell it as anything else, which is they're packaging it, these social media firms as this and that and the other, it's none of that. Okay. All it is is a publishing tool to either self promote you or to, um, you know, to, to uh, give more prominence to whoever pays them the most via ads or whatever else, like Cambridge Analytica, let's say, or, you know, um, whoever, whoever it might be. Okay. That's all it is. It's like buying a newspaper for crying out loud. It's the same thing. But people don't get this. People think it's actually genuinely a way to interact and interconnect. What they'll find at the end of the day is that it only panders to their most their most narcissistic base tendencies. It's not going to bring out the best in them. Okay, yeah. this is what's worrying about the smartphone generation. People won't see it just now massively because, let's say, people of well, I'm kind of old these days, but let's say people of my generation or people even of your generation. We had a, a brief time of growing up without this stuff. I'm assuming that's true for you, John. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Okay. All right. I didn't want to assume, you know. Uh, but oh, okay. But be, because actually, actually uh, I'm gonna just share this. Next next Monday, I will be thirty years old. So I I know I know a time without all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy birthday in advance, then. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure the, the viewers will wish you a happy birthday as well. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, so we've grown up in a time when when all of that wasn't there. Um, so we still have the capacity, I think, people of your generation, people of my generation, to say, well, we can try and limit the extent to which this thing, this, um, this piece of technology has a hold on us. But the upcoming generation won't be able to do that so well. And this is why a lot of people even inside Silicon Valley are getting freaked out. It's like we've created the monster, we've let the genie out the bottle, and there's no way to put it back. Because kids are being weaned on iPads and iPhones and all this business. You know, it's, it's really, really not good for their mental state insofar as the long term is concerned. The iPad or the iPhone is doing the parenting. Yeah. Do you see, what, and it's not I'm, not, I'm not just targeting Apple here, it's like Samsung's or whatever else as well, it can be anything. It's a little bit like what happened to the boomer generation, okay, and, and some of their descendants, which was television. Yeah, yeah, they would sit the child in front of the TV, and the TV became mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Now, all the dysfunction which, which came out of that, you don't need to be a genius to see it. Okay, so this is why I'm saying it's a can of worms and we're opening these cans without giving any thought uh, to what the long term effects are going to be of it. And if you have a smartphone, um, then you can also you use it for 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 things that will benefit you, you know, it's not this it, it is not solely this distraction device, you know, like it's it, it, I mean, it does serve as such, but um, you know, yeah. I mean, there are sh there are um, schools already who just teach fully in uh, in in iPads or laptops. You know, there's there's no actual write writing anymore, or hard hardly any pen pens. You know, or or papers. It's it's yeah, it is changing. Um, and I, I I sometimes do feel older than I actually am because, and that's because the the whole um, the whole evolution is just going it's just so fast i can even i cannot even keep up you know it's like when you said tv for the boomer generation well that's still here i mean well then bigger tvs <laughs> and more hd and and or whatever it's like you have to remain distracted the whole time you know by bigger screens or more pixels you know more hd or bigger phones you know it's yeah it i mean if this is, I mean, just in the last couple of ten years, ten couple of years, ten years, you know, it's it's like um, things have changed so much that I I I am really fearful in a way about the next ten years. Oh yeah, yeah, I think everybody is, to be honest with you, because we don't know what's coming. You know, this is the reality. I mean, we can we kind of know what might happen. 
what's very likely to happen as a result of certain things. But we don't know definitively exactly with precise detail how it's going to play out. We have a general sense of it. We know certain things, but we don't know other things. There are many possible directions in which it could go. So um, your guess is as good as mine's insofar as um, the evolution of technology. See, I think it's probably going to end up being something like a brave new world that Aldous Huxley described way back in the day. And, and a, a lot of people don't grasp this, but Huxley and Orwell were looking at the same thing, but from two different points of view. Yep. One was the upper class elite uh, view, and the other was the, let's call them in socialist slang, the proletariat, that is to say the working classes. Yeah. Right? So uh, two very different things. What they were both basically saying is two very different things are going to happen within society. There's going to be massive schisms. And they weren't the only ones to see this. H.G. Wells saw this in the time machine as well. He wrote some brilliant um, uh, essays on, on these ideas as, uh, as well as his novels, exploring all of this. So um, I think they had it pretty spot on. You know, I don't think they were out by that much in, in what they were describing. And I think this is what's going to unfold. Um, you're going to have people who mistake technology for science despite the fact these are two very different disciplines, uh, two very different things. But it's not even just the knowledge of uh, engineering that I'm talking about here. I think what we're going to end up, be, what's going to end up happening is they're going to end up being people that know how to use technology, right? Because it's so user friendly, but won't know the first thing about how technology works. And they'll mistake themselves wrongly as being, and this is one of the things I was trying to point out again, they'll mistake themselves as being highly advanced just because they can push buttons on an iPhone or a, or a Samsung or whatever, right? Um, and again, they won't know the first thing about it. They'll, they won't have gone to study engineering, either uh, professionally or otherwise. Um, so, you know, you're going to have a two or three tier system in real terms uh, as 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 we approach the next decade and 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 it's just going to get worse and worse and one of the biggest problems of course again is that automation is going to cull a lot of jobs it's already happening now nobody wants to have this discussion right now right but all these so called professions like uh, doctors, lawyers, all this business, that's going to go by the wayside. Even those jobs won't be secure. Machines are going to do a lot of that now. Yeah. They're already talking about it. They've developed algorithms which will do the most complex medical procedures. They can diagnose you online, right? This, this is what's happening. It's already uh, happened in the UK. It's just that people don't know about it. If you, if you ever go onto any of these websites, these pharmacy websites, very few people will have done. But uh, you, you can go through a checklist of various things and you tell this uh, bot, this AI system, what your ailments are, and then it will prescribe you something. Wow. Right? So we're already there. Who needs a GP anymore? Right? Then it's just a, a, a next logical step into surgery being performed uh, by um, uh, automated systems and so on. I mean, this is, there's not a lot left there, really, uh, that machines can't do. So what you will have, and this is why I'm saying people need to be aware of this, what you will have is a surplus of uh, what were previously termed as useful, useless eaters. What are you going to do with all these people with no vocation, no job, no prospects, no anything? And that's going to number into the millions. Mm -hmm. Now, if they don't serve any kind of purpose whatsoever, where do you think they're going to go? What do you think governments are going to do with, with such an excess population? Now, if you, want, if you want an idea of it, feel free to take a look at third world countries where they're dealing with these problems, right, of excess populations which are unskilled or whatever. Okay, or, or or where their skill isn't required. In most cases, you'll find there's a real uh, case of 
genocide that breaks out, ethnic cleansing, whole populations are wiped out. You know, but people don't want to think about this again, right? The implications of it all. Yeah. That's the thing. We're happy to just sit in blissful ignorance for now, rather than taking on these challenges directly and trying to do something to curb the speed at which technology is progressing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I don't know what to add to, to, to all that. I mean, it's a frightening uh, outlook, but it's certainly not, not uh, too out there, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think it is, you know, and but but we'll see we'll see what happens. I'll be here too, just watching everything happening. Yeah, you know, and uh, probably being just as outraged about it as I am right now. Mm -hmm. You know, doing as, as much as I can to prevent the calamities um, from uh, the, to prevent the dark ages from descending on man again. You know, uh, but we don't know. We don't know. Anyway, I'm going to read out some uh, super chats here uh, that have been sitting here for a while. Uh, because we've been chatting. Let's see here. The dashing rogue. Uh, there is no long-ass agenda. There are a lot of agendas by many players, part of many factions. That's partly true, uh, but not the whole truth. You do have multiple factions uh, descending from the one singular agenda, and it's a power play uh, between different groups right now. A lot of it is, is down to uh, power politics, because there's this ethos uh, at the center of it all. I won't spend too long on this question, but it's just this is kind of or, or this comment rather. There's an ethos at the center of it which is socially Darwinistic, okay, and and that's the dangerous part. But uh, you you'll probably need to look into that a little bit more, or maybe I need to talk about it more at some stage. Uh, subsequently, is forming continental hyper states like the EU and slowly USSEA, U U Union Soviet States of Eurasia. That's Russia, China, and Iran. That's from. EC2189 Kaku, yeah. Um, that is a big problem, the Eurasian Union, um, because the the bulk of uh, power and control is going to end up in the hands of very few, well, fewer and fewer players as time goes on, even on the world stage. So the main players are going to end up being Russia, China, uh, Iran, but also, more importantly, Israel. Okay, and so uh, you, you're going to see what, what you'll probably find if you do any amount of research uh, into that is that Russia and China are a main threat, but that they are themselves uh, very heavily indebted to, especially with China, by the way, they're very heavily indebted to uh, Israel uh, for because of the fact that Israel has been passing on uh, military secrets, diplomatic secrets, technology. Uh, to China, uh, that's something that most people don't don't yet know about. Uh, but that's happening. So there's there's big power plays being made uh, left, right, and center. But again, the agenda will pretty much uh, stay the same. Uh, the postmodernists are cultural satanists. Yes, that's true. The dashing rogue says that. Um, Marcus Aurelius said that JD for context. If it's not true, don't say it. Good to see you back, Mr. Black. Social media is corresponding with communitarian philosophy, collectivized groups as communities. Absolutely right. Uh, that's from EC2189 Kaku again. Uh, the Dashing Rogue again asks here, has Mr. Black heard of the Rogers curve of innovation and adoption, i.e. trendsetter of ideas, early adopter of ideas, when it comes to memes and propaganda, this is a great map to see the world in. Yes, I do, but I don't have time to go into it here. Uh, Anthony Petrillo asks, gentlemen, what, how can we live in order to combat this? For example, earning dollars in my career, the taxes are taken from me to go towards these horrible things. Could you give some bullet points or tactics with earning and money to get away from the system? Well, the first thing I would say is that you need to disconnect entirely from the system as much as is possible. Um, and that might mean even having to resort to self-employment at some stage. I think that's going to become inevitable, again, as technology rolls out further and further. There's going to be very, very few niche markets into which people can go. Um, but also just in terms of the, the political uh, state of the world right now, uh, there's a lot of um, chaos. So uh, the best 
thing I could I could see is that well insulate yourself as much as you can save up as much money as you can try and avoid uh, find any way you can and avoid uh, paying more taxes than you have to uh, and if you can just you know resist at all costs because yes you're quite right ta taxes do go towards funding foreign wars they do cause all these problems statism is not the solution uh it will not yield uh, freedom uh it, it will it will not yield to freedom uh it doesn't want people to be free so yeah let's see um the dashing rogue will you make a video about the trivium method to teach people how to think for themselves um, I don't think you need to teach people how to think for themselves. I think they're already capable of doing that. But I do think you need to give them a certain process or methodology through which they can analyze truth, at least in the beginning. Now, I've already made a video on the trivium, uh, so that is already there. Uh, Alexander Munro says, hold the phone, first live show, first super chat. Love from Michigan, Scottish Americans, uh, for our guy, Michael. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say. Uh, it's not the first live show we've done, is it, John? Nope. Second, uh, because the first one was, was was with Matt Presti as well. That's right. Yep. Earlier yeah. this year. So. Yep. Uh, I think this is the second one we've done together. Yeah. Um, overall, I think it's probably the third or fourth live stream that I've done. I might make it a more regular thing, depending if people like it or not. I don't know. Uh, we just sort of decided, John and I, to kind of do this uh, last minute off the cuff, really. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> let us know if you like it or not, or if you prefer the format of just uh, video uploads or a combination of the two or uh, whatever it might be. Um, but that's us covered the super chats. Uh, let's see, are there any other interesting questions in the chat itself? Uh, really interesting comments in the chat, actually. I, I noticed this all, uh, throughout. It's very, very interesting stuff. Great. Um, yep, yep. A lot of people talking about, uh, well, pretty much everything that we've covered. Uh, Elon Musk says, did Elon Musk say something about merging with machines to not become the second class or obsolete? Yes, he kind of did mention something along those lines. A when, when the cleverest people on the face of this earth are telling you that AI could emerge as a potential serious threat, it might be time to listen, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Yep. Again, brilliant comments here all round from what I can see. There was a comment I wanted to kind of point out here and, and just kind of say uh, it was a really well thought out comment. I, I can't, um, can't find it here now. I'd have to scroll all the way back to the beginning of the thing. And well, I'll, I think we'll just sort of leave it there. What do you think, John? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, uh, we, we've talked a lot about these things. Um, and my my brain is getting a bit foggy of it now. So it's <laughs> <laughs> same here. It's it's getting late in the evening in, yeah. in both our respective countries. I think so. Yeah. Um, but we will love you and leave you and uh, say thank you very much for watching. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure interacting with you all. I hope you're all well and continue to stay well. God bless all of you and take care of yourselves. <laughs>